So you've been watching lots of Mr. Subaru videos here on YouTube and you are now confident and ready to jump into working on and repairing your Subaru vehicle all on your own. But you need some tools. So that's what we're going to talk about today is some specialty tools that you will need for doing DIY repairs on your Subaru vehicle. So guys, we've got quite the assortment of tools here on the toolbox to talk about. Now, all of these are not specialized only for Subaru. Some of them are uh, some generic tools, but they serve their purpose with Subaru. So we're going to go through each and every one of them and tell you what they are, what they do, and what job you will be needing them for on your Subaru vehicle. So guys, as I mentioned, we've got quite the assortment of tools here. So we're going to try to go through in some kind of organized chaos here explain each one. I'll try to put part numbers and links for any of these and all of these tools that I can in the description below for those of you that need them, interested in them, etc. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. So first off, we're going to talk about these two sockets here. These are from CTA. We've got the 5305 and the 7630. Now what these are engine barring tools or tools that will go over your crankshaft, this one for F-series engines, this one's for EJ-series engines. It just slides over the crankshaft and allows you to rotate the engine when you don't have the crank bolt or anything on the front of the engine. Just a quick, simple half-inch drive socket where you can turn over the rotating assembly of the engine. So pretty easy, pretty nice to have, especially when you're doing any kind of engine work. So next up, we've got a Koken socket. This is a Koken 13 millimeter pipe plug socket. Now this socket is for servicing your rear differential gear oil. This is a part number 4110M. And all of the Subarus pretty much up until recently, I think most of them now are hex plugs, uh, use two big square 13 millimeter plugs in the back. Uh, one for your check and fill, one for your drain. Now, in a pinch, you can jam a half-inch drive ratchet in there or a half-inch drive uh, extension and a ratchet, but it's a 13 millimeter, and this just fits that much snugger and tighter and lessens the possibility of you rounding out that fastener, which uh, if you round out either one, it's going to be a very bad day. So uh, there's that. Next up, for fuel systems on modern Subarus, you have a quick coupler or a quick disconnect fuel feed line to your fuel rail, and you're going to need this, which is an AST8028. Now there's a dash one and dash two because it's two separate pieces, and then you got this little rubber band to keep them handy, but basically you'll just put one piece over top, push it in, rotate it, put the other piece in, push it in, rotate it, and then you can release the quick release on your fuel supply line at the fuel rail. So next up on the list, we've got a socket from Snap-on. I don't know off the top of my head any other manufacturer that offers this socket, but it's a part number S6214, and it's a half-inch drive, 12.14 millimeter socket. This is for EJ Series engine head bolts. Now, it is the correct length to get on top of the head bolt and allow a half-inch drive ratchet, and it will clear your um, cam carrier, rock arms, etc for your ratchet where you can pull the heads with the engine still in the car. Now, if you've got the engine out on the engine stand doing head gaskets, you don't really need this socket. This one is uh, specifically for being able to get the head bolts loose and tightened with the engine installed in the car. Next up, we've got a Snap-on 32 millimeter, six point half inch drive CV axle uh, nut socket. It's a SIMM320. Uh, so basically, as far as I recollect, every single Subaru CV axle nut is a 32 millimeter. Do you have to get a snap on? Absolutely not. There are plenty of other manufacturers, but a deep 32 half inch drive or even a shallow or semi deep will get the job done for replacing the CV axles on your Subaru vehicle. Next up, another socket from Snap-on. This one's more specialized and probably not something that most DIYers are going to invest in, but this is a Snap-on BTCS1. Now, what this is, is for getting the brake uh, caliper, the front brake caliper bracket bolts loose. Uh, the way they are mounted on the front of a Subaru where the strut and the knuckle meet 
it's extremely hard to get any kind of normal socket on there and you're pretty much forced to use a wrench. Well, this allows you to get on there with a half inch drive impact and get those sometimes rusted, sometimes seized bolts off a heck of a lot easier than having to put a very long wrench or double boxing or double stacking wrenches to break these loose. Just makes life a lot easier to put a half inch drive impact on there and just knock them right out of there for doing brake services. Next up on the list is a belt, stretch belt installer remover. And I can't remember who this is by or the part number. I think it's a Lyle. I'll put on the screen if I can figure it out. Uh, but this is something you don't need much anymore on Subarus for a time there at the very end of the EJ series engines. Uh, they were doing stretch belts for the AC compressor, uh, but I don't believe that the newer ones are doing stretch belts. Uh, none of the ones I've worked on have uh, had stretch belts, so it's not something you really need. Next up, something that is crucial if you live in the rust belt. Now, here in the South, we don't deal with a ton of rust, but I do get rusty Subarus from time to time down from the North Carolina mountains, uh, but that's about as much as I see. This is the Astro 78620 Subaru Ball Joint Puller. Now the way Subaru Ball Joints mount, they go inside of the bottom of the steering knuckle and then they have a pinch bolt that holds them in place. Well, after time and corrosion, those ball joints get pretty much seized up inside of that steering knuckle and they can be a pain to take loose. But not with this. You thread this onto the threaded part of the ball joint brace this against the bottom of the spindle and put your impact on there and it'll pull it right out of there. Now I have seen a lot of success with this. Personally, I haven't had an issue. It's pulled out every single ball joint I put it on. I believe some user or viewers have commented that they had a ball joint actually separate on them and uh, end up having to get another steering knuckle out of the junkyard. Uh, but for the most part, this thing works and it works well. Now, you don't have to buy it from Astro. I think Company 23 offers it now and several other manufacturers. And uh, Snap-on even has one that's about five times the cost of this one. Uh, but that one's another really, really good one to have for suspension doing ball joints. Next up on the list is kind of a generalized tool. It's not super specific, but it is a seal puller. So if you're gonna go through, say on your EJ series engine and do cam seals or crank seals, uh, you want one of these or one of these to go in there and grab that seal and pull it out. So what you do is you go in and hook the edge of the seal, you brace this against something, push, and it'll pop it right out. Uh, this one is made by Lyle, but I don't remember the part number offhand. I'll put it on the screen. And uh, this one is one I imported from Japan from a company called Straight. Don't remember the part number on it as well, but uh, I'll post it on the bottom of the screen. So next up, another socket that isn't crucial to have, but if you're working on Subarus, if you work in the dealership, this is something I recommend. It is the Kokin 14145PM. It's a 19 millimeter lug socket. Now this one is great. I've been using it for years. The only thing I've had happen really is the plastic protector sleeve has cracked on it. It hasn't failed on me yet, uh, but it did crack. Now this does not have any kind of torque limiting in it. It's not a torque stick. Even though it's painted, and it's got the neck down section here. Uh, that's just the way they're made. They color coordinate the size, not a torque setting. Uh, so don't go run these off an impact and think you've torqued them properly. Uh, that's not the case. So these are super thin wall. They've got the protector here to keep from scratching inside of wheels. They've also got a little plastic cap inside to keep from scuffing up the end of the Subaru chrome cap uh, lugs. So uh, that's another neat one to have to toolbox. Again, not so much for DIYers, but if you work on a lot of cars, a lot of Subarus working in a dealership, this is a good one to pick up. Moving on from there, we'll talk about spark plugs. Now I won't talk about this too in depth because I've already covered this in another video, which I'll link up here in the top corner. But we've got some spark plug sockets. Uh, 14 and 16 millimeter are what you'll need. Most all the F series engines now are 14 millimeter spark plugs and the older EJ series engines are 16 millimeter spark plugs. Uh, these are the Coke and Z series spark plug sockets. They're extremely thin wall, small, compact, easy to use on Subarus because we already know there's not a lot of room to work on Subaru spark plugs. And then here we've got the Tone A uh, I believe this is a PG86S. If I got that wrong, I'll correct it on the screen. Uh, but this is another super thin wall uh, spark plug socket with a set of extensions. This one is specifically designed for changing your spark plugs out in your BRZ 
GT86, GR86, or FRS's FA20 engine uh, to keep you from having to raise or lift the engine off of the engine mounts. So talking about spark plugs and Subarus, one of the greatest things you can have in your hand is an extremely slim 3 8 inch drive ratchet. All the room that you can uh, save yourself getting in between the frame rail and the cylinder head to change spark plugs on a Subaru, the easier your life will be. Now this is a Snap-on THLL F72 that I custom uh, converted over to a 3 8 inch drive. I had to custom machine a faceplate for this ratchet uh, to work with a 3 8 inch drive conversion. I covered that in another video a while back. I'll put that in the corner as well. Uh, but a lot of people aren't going to buy a snap-on ratchet just to do your own spark plugs in your Subaru, maybe once in your lifetime. So if you want a cheaper alternative, not cheaper quality-wise, just cheaper price-wise, you can look at this Koken 2725Z160. Now it is even more compact than the snap-on, but it is a 3 8 inch drive and you can get right on there for your spark plugs. Now you don't have as much overall length in this as the snap-on, to you know, clear uh, the cylinder head, but you still have enough working room that this is a usable, viable option. Uh, so either one of these, if you're gonna get ready to change your spark plugs in your Subaru, are gonna help you out immensely compared to just a regular box standard off the shelf 3 8 inch drive ratchet. So I know I get coined as a Snap-on fanboy quite a bit here on uh, the social medias, uh, but it's for good reason, because the tools just work. Now, a lot of people, when they're replacing the rocker cover gaskets on their EJ series engines, have issue getting the lower 10 millimeter headed bolt uh, backward, uh, the one that butts up near the frame rail. There is an extremely small amount of space to get in there. Now, if you don't wanna have to jack up your engine, don't want to take your engine mounts loose, you can get one of these Snap-on TLLF-72s and a shallow 10 quarter inch socket and you can get on there without much muss and fuss compared to trying to get in there with a uh, again off the shelf quarter inch or 3 8 inch drive ratchet that's just a whole lot larger in size than this one here's one that we haven't seen or needed in quite a while now this is a snap-on punch uh, it's a roll pin punch 7 30 seconds Part number is PPR7. Now, roll pin punch is different from regular punch because of that little dimple right there. Older Subaru CV axles on the front had a roll pin that held them onto the stub shaft that came out of the front differential. No longer is that the case. Uh, now, to change out a CV axle, you basically just need a pry bar to uh, pop the uh, retention clip out of the front differential and it all comes out as assembly. But in the older Subarus, you had to drive out that roll pin to free the axle. So uh, having one of these on changing out an axle in the older Subarus is a lot of help because if you've tried to drive out those roll pins or drive them in without a roll pin punch, you know it can be an absolute nightmare. So here's another generalized thing for you, and that is a good set of metric hex sockets. There's quite a few hex fasteners on Subaru vehicles. The newer ones have more than the older ones did. Now this one here is a 14 millimeter. That's a snap-on. Uh, you'll find this for the block halves. Each block half on the EJ series engine used a 14 millimeter uh, hex plug for the block drain for the coolant system. Uh, they also used it for the piston pin access cover uh, for pulling your piston pins and disassembling the engine. Uh, there's also uh, smaller, I believe 12 or 10 millimeter uh, for the EJ series turbo engine uh, cam pulley bolts. If you ever had to remove one of those, uh, you know they can be very, very hard, very stuck on there and uh, can round out pretty easily. Uh, so these are Mac RBRT sockets, uh, basically the same thing as a hex, but they're more likely to get those out without rounding them. Uh, another good thing to have in your arsenal if you're going to do any kind of engine work to your Subaru or if you work at Subaru or work on Subarus regularly, a good set of hex sockets. And again, I believe the sizes you'll need are 8, 10, 12, 14 off the top of my head. Moving on from there is kind of an oddball. This is a Koken 3300FN. This is a flare nut socket. Now what this is used for on newer Subaru models that have direct fuel injection, the hard lines, the hard fuel lines from the high pressure pump, the fuel rails, etc., 
have a 17 millimeter uh, fitting on them. So this allows you to get onto that and get around the fuel line coming out of there. These are also good on brake lines, et cetera, in different sizes as well. They sell them as a set or as individuals. Uh, as far as I recollect, 17 is the only size that you need for the fuel system on the Subarus, but might be wrong on the newer models. Uh, another one we don't really see a lot anymore and is more specific to the older Subarus is a T70 Torx. Now, mid 2000s up, the front differential drain plug for the gear oil went to a Torx T70, where previously I believe it was a 22 millimeter regular hex headed bolt. Uh, but for whatever reason, they switched it to a T70. So if you've got a Subaru in that range, and you need to change your front differential gear oil, you're going to need to get yourself a T70 torque socket. So this one here is kind of an oddball. There's different styles of these pliers. I've got a pair of Knipex here, and I've also got, I believe, a Lyle pair here. But on the later or last of the EJ series engines, and also on the turbocharged on the EJ 255 and 257, uh, some of the PCV hoses had click clamp uh, clamps on them and you need a set of good click clamp pliers to get them on and off without completely obliterating and destroying them. So uh, another thing to add to the tool arsenal. Now what's been lurking here in the back, uh, this is not quite a specialized tool nor is it quite uh, required, but something that's good to have nonetheless, and that is a set of vessel screwdrivers. Just because these things are way better at getting into the fasteners, the screws, on Japanese vehicles, Japanese motorcycles, Japanese cars, they're far less likely to strip out the tips and screw up your screws. So these are not very expensive. There's different styles. This is the Jaws Fit, I believe. There's the wood compote handle. There's the ball grips. There's all kind of different styles of vessel Japanese screwdrivers, but save yourself the headache. Invest in a good set of vessel screwdrivers for working on your Subaru or any other Japanese vehicle for that matter. So next up on the list is more engine work. And these come from ASF Machine. I believe Company 23 also offers these now as well. And what these are are camshaft, crankshaft, rear main steel installers. Uh, basically, you put your new seal in place, throw this on, tighten your bolts, it pops your seal in, and installs it to the correct depth. So that's for the rear main seal. We've got one for the crank. We've got one for uh, cam seals. There's all kinds of different ones for all the seals and gaskets. Like I said, you just put your new seal on there, plop this on, run your bolt in there, tighten it down. It presses it in squarely and to the correct depth, just making it so much easier when replacing those seals. So in the last Subaru DIY tools, we talked about the Lyle spill-free funnel. Uh, this is a part number 24680. This is great in refilling your cooling system, making sure you bleed all those air bubbles out. It's just uh, really, really helpful in that, especially now that the new ones are clear, you can sit in the car and see as all the air bubbles out of the car. You don't have to worry about coolant splashing all over the front of the engine, out of the radiator filler neck. Just makes life a lot more easy. Now, that said, a lot of the newer, like last three or four year uh, Subaru models require that you use a cooling refiller, a vacuum refiller. This one's from Mac Tools. Lots of the tool trucks sell them. You can get them on Amazon. I'll try to leave links in the description for it, but we've used this in many videos in the past. What you do is it's applied uh, shop air here. Uh, it'll pull a vacuum on your entire cooling system. There's a gauge that shows the pressure of the vacuum on the system. This is also a great way to test if you have a leak in your cooling system after 
you know, any repairs before you put coolant in it. You can see if it's holding pressure or holding vacuum. And uh, once you've got it all vacuumed down, uh, you just toss this into a bucket of clean coolant, turn the valve, and the vacuum will suck in the coolant without air and without the risk or worry of having a trapped air bubble anywhere. So a cooling system refiller, vacuum refiller, is a great tool to have, as well as the Lyle Spill Free Funnel for doing coolant, uh, anything cooling system related. Another one I don't even think is made anymore. I've had trouble finding it on Amazon and I've had people message me on videos in the past trying to find this. This is an AST OF SU 1042. Now what this is is an oil funnel for Subaru vehicles. You take your oil cap off. This threads right in place of the oil cap. Just makes changing your oil, adding oil that much easier. Uh, as far as I know, it threads into every single Subaru engine. I've yet to uh, find a Subaru engine it wouldn't thread it into. All of the EJ series engines, EZ series engines, the EG, the FA, FB, every single one I've tried it on, it works. So as I said before, I believe they might have discontinued this, but they do offer um, a more universal funnel now. Uh, instead of this style just for Subaru. So uh, you might have to go with that, unfortunately, instead of this one. So another great tool to add to the arsenal is an OTC 5609. So this kit is great for diagnosing the health of your engine. It's great for finding head gasket issues, great for intake or exhaust valve issues, and great for defective rings, cracked pistons, etc. This thing is great to have especially if you've got a turbocharged EJ series engine and uh, it's not been running well or you've had a misfire that didn't go away with spark plugs, coils, etc. So uh, another one to add in there, just a helpful, helpful thing to have. Uh, on top of that, another helpful thing to have is a good compression test set. Now again, for you uh, turbocharged EJ guys, uh, cylinder four, it's uh, a good idea to have the compression tester just to check the overall health of your engine. Now, if I could only get one, either compression or a leak down tester, I'd probably lean towards the leak down tester as uh, it's a little bit better at diagnosing more things than just a simple compression tester is. So guys, starting over here on the right side, we've got TimeCert Insert Thread Repair Kits. Now this isn't something hopefully you'll ever need and uh, not something you're gonna need regularly. But there are a lot of times that, especially on the EJ series engines, threads get damaged or torn out of the blocks, mainly because they're aluminum and it's a lot softer. So a lot of times when people are doing a timing belt replacement, they'll over torque, over tighten uh, the tensioner or the idler pulleys and pull the threads out. Or another place I see it commonly is on the power steering pump. Um, bracket bolts. A lot of times those get over torqued and pull the threads out of the block. So time cert kits are great for thread repair on anything on your Subaru, not just the engine. But that's more of a tool for someone that works on them all day every day, not so much a DIY. But if you do have that issue, check out time cert and their inserts. Far better, in my opinion, than helicoils. Another tool we've got down here is a snap-on tool. This is the BJP1BKS. We've used this in videos in the past, and all this is is an adapter set for snap-on ball joint press set that allows you to press in and out lower control arm bushings on Subaru vehicles. It's pretty much useless without the nearly $1,000 ball joint press. I just put it in here again because, you know, this isn't all DIY. There are some Subaru techs on here. Watch my videos, possibly, so uh, that's another one to pick up if you've got the BJP1. Although I've heard most of the time people are just replacing the entire control arm instead of the bushing, but I replace bushings for customers. So on to this side, we've got lots of specialty holding tools. Almost every single thing here is Company 23, except for this one that is a CTA. This is a generic no name off of Amazon, and this one I made myself. So this one here I made myself. You've seen before in my Subaru sandbar videos is a crankshaft pulley holding tool for the Subaru EN07, uh, just so you can torque down the crank pulley bolt. Over here, we've got uh, various cam and crank holding tools. This one is an EJ25D. Uh, this one here is for EJ205. This is the crank pulley holder. 
Uh, they have, uh, I think this is the version two, where it's got an adapter, it's got the four big bolts, and it's got the four smaller bolts, depending on if it's an early or a later uh, pulley. We've got this one from CTA. This is a 7615. This is for the AVCS cams on the turbocharged engines. And then we've got this one from Company 23, just the two pins. I believe that's for like the uh, EJ251s, et cetera, the non-turbo uh, metal cam gear engine uh, configuration. And back here at the back, again, I don't know the company that makes these. Um, they're all generic and uh, rebranded on Amazon, Chinese, Taiwanese, but uh, there's several different ones out there. And uh, what this is, is a uh, pin spanner set. Now, I believe Company 23 also makes this as well for the new F-Series engines. Uh, but this one you'll need for the new FAs, FBs, for holding the uh, crankshaft pulley to take it loose or torque it, and also for your uh, camshaft pulleys. So there is that. Now, this one is nice because it's got convertible tips. Although I can say that uh, the price I paid for it, uh, it is cheap, it is soft. I've already uh, tweaked it, bent it, pulling on it. Uh, so it probably be best to ensure that you buy a quality one. Uh, the El Cheapo here uh, might be good for one more use, but uh, I think I've got two uses on it now and it's already starting to tweak over and bend. So uh, not a great long-term investment in this tool. So on to the end of the video now, we've got for our transmission services, especially on the newer Subarus with the CVTs. I say newer, but they've been out for over a decade at this point, so I guess they're not technically new anymore. Uh, but both of these are made by Mighty Vac. This one's a Mighty Vac, even though it says Mac on it. Um, but this one here is constantly full of CVT fluid too. I use this to pump the transmission fluid into the side of the transmission as they don't have a dipstick tube and uh, can't be filled through a funnel anymore. This one I just picked up this week. It comes with this adapter set and uh, this is great for, again, the CVT and transmissions that don't have the funnel anymore. Uh, you pressurize it, pump it up and uh, fill it full of transmission fluid and uh, you can just hook this in through the fill hole and let it pump until it starts dribbling out. They also have uh, special adapters that thread into your transmission and they've got some universal ones. Uh, I don't think any of these fit the Subaru, which with the Subaru, you've got a, your check and your fill are the same plug, so you really couldn't uh, plug it off like that. Uh, so one of these will probably be beneficial for uh, filling up the CVT because uh, this one just really comes with a, uh, little plastic in and uh, a lot of times I've had it slip out of the transmission or I've got to sit there and hold it in there the whole time and that gets aggravating. So last but certainly not least is the Mini Ductor Venom HP. Now this is an inductive heating tool that quickly puts heat into rusted nuts and bolts to free them up. Now this is something I recently picked up. I've known about them for years. I sold them for years when I was a snap-on dealer. Uh, but this thing, you guys that live in the north and you're fighting all that rust and corrosion, all those nasty rusty nuts and bolts, definitely worth the investment if you do this a lot. Now, the DIY guys, uh, there are cheaper inductive heaters on Amazon and stuff. If you're just going to use it, you know, a handful of times for a project here or there, changing the wheel bearing, changing a ball joint, etc. But uh, if you guys are, uh, you know, a professional tech or whatever, invest in a good one and get this one from Induction Innovations. So guys, there you have it. A long list of Subaru specialty tools and tools that are just great to have on hand when working on your Subaru vehicle, either as a DIY application or as someone going to work in the dealership. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one.